Welcome to the weekly report. Jacob Zuma says that he will not appear before the Zondo Commission defying a constitutional court ruling. Zuma's statement lamented what he views as the bias of the State Capture Commission and the judiciary. But the inquiry says that it will file criminal charges against the former statesman for defying two summons and ignoring the apex court's ruling. The Commission can't do anything until the 15th of February, which is when Mr. Zuma has been summoned to appear, because despite the statement that he issued earlier this week, he may well turn up. There are calls for him to be stripped of his privileges as a former president, as he appears intent on flouting the laws of the country. The EFF has meanwhile accused the Commission of ignoring testimony that implicates President Ramaphosa and Minister Pravin Gordon. It's a victory for Muslim women in the South African military. The SANDF has ended its discriminatory headscarf ban. It stems from the three-year-long Major Fatima Isaacs case. She was dragged to a military court for refusing to remove her headscarf. Trade Federation Kosato says it shouldn't have taken so long to knock some common sense into the heads of the military's bureaucrats. Those who have taken up shelter at Woodstock Hospital are living in fear. They are scared of being forcefully evicted. This as the city of Cape Town is pacing ahead with plans to develop social housing. The municipality has asked the High Court to order a survey of the illegal occupants and their circumstances. Housing activists have urged the city to engage with the residents. A demand has been made for government to be transparent in the tender process for the storage and distribution of the COVID-19 vaccines. Parliament's Standing Committee on Public Accounts says the country cannot afford a repeat of the corruption that happened with the personal protective equipment. South Africa has so far received a million doses of the vaccine for health workers. Oil giant Shell is being held to account. A Dutch court has ordered its Nigerian division to compensate farmers whose land was damaged due to oil leaks in the Niger Delta. Its parent company, Anglo Dutch, has been instructed to install equipment to prevent future damage. The ruling is a victory for farmers. It's also an, a very important uh, message to multinationals in general. Uh, it's not possible to ignore the rights of uh, people in developing countries anymore. Myanmar has slipped back into military rule, exposing the power the army still wields. The army general, Min Aung Hliang, who led the coup, claims that there was fraud in the November 8th elections. Ousted Aung San Suu Kyi and other senior members of the National League for Democracy party remain under arrest. Citizens have expressed their disapproval of the coup. And that's it for the weekly report. Until next time.